Hi, I'm Leah. And I'm Emily. And welcome to The Boob Podcast. The podcast with no structure, no plan, and no hope. It's episode eight. I ate people because I'm a cannibal. <laughs> that was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just came off right off the fly Woo, right, off the, right off the top of my noggin what juicy noggin that is mm-hmm. also yeah um if you haven't sussed out by now today we're going to be talking about cannibals two cannibals in particular two russian cannibals but i don't know so i should just, just jump straight in i don't know what's <laughs> it's how it's going so let's get, let's get straight to the point <laughs> <laughs> Should we not do a bit of banter? <laughs> it's not an <laughs> we're like, screw the bloody listeners. We need. I tell you what, we need to. We need to stop having a chat before we start recording. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. no, we have all these wholesome talks about like YouTube drama, and then <laughs> literally like... old drama teachers and snacks. Mhm. And then like, we <laughs> click recording. It's like cannibals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't, oh, I don't know where to banter because I'm. Stop messing with your feet. You're in that stage now. Are you mid growing out, aren't you? So you keep yeah. touching. It's it suits you though. Annoying. Thank you. Um. So, listener, um, this is if I don't sound as chipper as I usually do when I get about halfway through this story, <laughs> don't blame me. It's just a lot. And as we segue to a couple of episodes of going to Spooky Town, and last week we did ghosts and the paranormal, this week we're delving into some true crime. So if you are sensitive to detailed descriptions of crime, murder, cannibalism, <laughs> I think most I'm people are sensitive to that. I don't laugh because it's funny. I laugh because it's so <laughs> crazy to me. This is nervous laughter because if I didn't laugh, I'd cry. <laughs> I mean, do, and we are big fans of food, as we know. But I think even we would draw a line. Yeah. That, um. So like, if you are a little bit sensitive to squeamishness, I suggest you listen to maybe our Snog Marry Avoid episode, that's or awesome. you know, a, a different one. Just click off it. It's fine. It's okay. You don't have to. You don't have to stay here. <laughs> We're not holding you hostage, but some people did hold some people hostage, and I'm going to tell you about them. <laughs> <laughs> You're natural at this. You should have the most <laughs> YouTube tutorials, I'll tell you. So, today, nice. I'm going to tell you, and feel free to pause at any point to ask relevant questions, or non-relevant questions, as that's usually our gig. <laughs> We have been defiant. Today, I'm going to be talking about Dimitri and Natalia Bakshiv, also known as the Cannibal Couple. Dimitri, he was born on January 28th, 1982. He was placed into an orphanage in Siberia because basically his his mum just couldn't look after him. Sometimes that is it's how it is. But at three, he was adopted by a couple called Svetlana and Vladimir, and they lived in a Russian town I can't pronounce. Yeah. Um, or yeah, this is set in Russia, so be prepared for me to not pronounce anything correct, <laughs> including names, places, other things. There's just a lot of big words. It's Russia, um, so I'm gonna try and pronounce where they live. Zipper. Zipolov, <laughs> Zipovsky, yeah, Zipovsky, yeah. Okay, here we go. Well, that was more um, massacre than the actual massacre. I don't know if this is a male or a female name, so I'm just going to say shh, die. Um, mm-hmm. Kras- Krasnodor, Yulia, Maish, oh, here we go. <laughs> Maishchenko, who was a childhood friend, and that might may not actually be their name because I pulled some of this, basically, the Russian articles about this case didn't use the real names of anyone involved. Yeah. Um, the UK ones and the American articles I read, and like I think I read some from like other places in Europe, they did use everyone's names because they were talking about the event like quite a bit later than mm-hmm. the Russian ones. So 
some of the names might not be correct um but the names of the killers and the names of i only know one name of one victim they're their actual names right. but this childhood friend who that fucking long name they picked might not even be their actual name thank you Russia. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. I said she, but I, Krasnodar, I don't know if that's a male name or a female name. So they, they never saw um, Dimitri's biological parents and they were friends from being younguns. They said that Svetlana and Vladimir had a biological daughter named Katya when Dimitri was seven, but they didn't think they could have any kids. So this was a bit of a, a surprise, but right. a good one. Um, growing up, um, Krasnodar described... Dimitri as an animal lover. He loved dogs and would follow around. There was a local stray that they used to follow around together. Um, awesome. Which is weird because normally when you find out about true crime, like people like, like Jeffrey Dahmer, he would like fuck up like little kitty cats and dogs and like, animals and stuff. And stuff yeah. 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 Like I, I know, oh, I can't believe I have knowledge on this topic, but when Jeffrey Dahmer was a kid, <laughs> when Jeffrey Dahmer was a kid, <laughs> He found a stray, not a stray dog, a dead dog, and he took it home, and he decapitated the dog, and he did a dissection on it, and then, as you do, he went, Papa, how do you, because his dad was a chemist, this is completely off topic, this is not about Dimitri or Natalia at all, uh, and, but ironically, another, like, cannibal, he did eat some of it, didn't he? A dick or two, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Can you back that up with science? Because that's a claim and a half, I love it. <laughs> Did he part? I think he ate parts of them. I'm not sure. Anyway, this isn't about Jeffrey Star. Jeffrey Star. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know he's a bad man. <laughs> um, Jeffrey Dahmer, whatever. Um, just for. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so back to Dimitri. Dimitri was an animal lover. He loved dogs. Um, they described Dimitri as a little reserved, in quote. Um, so he, and he was a bit shy and a bit of a loner. And he used to walk around town just on his tot. He just enjoyed being... He likes his own company. Been there. I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> now it gets a little bit sadder. We get into some of, some of the sadder stuff. So at 50, his um, adopted mother said... If I can talk... Svetlana, she was diagnosed with cancer and she oh, died no. a week later. So apparently after this, Vladimir got mean and started like trying to push him out of the house. And I saw on one of the Russian things, or the translation is a bit funky, um, that maybe it was his dad's new girlfriend, him and her, they were sort of trying to push her out, hit yeah. like Dimitri out. But there's not that much to back. This, I couldn't really find anything to back it up. But apparently, they, um, the Russian article was saying that um, it was worse for Dimitri than his sister. And the friend was saying because he was adopted, but Kasia was obviously oh. biological. So, But again, the translation on that was a bit dodge. So who, who knows? Um, <laughs> Vladimir kicks Dimitri out at 15. Yeah. And again, weird translation. There was bread. Leave it there now, we're done. Signing off now, guys. <laughs> um, I think through using my noggin that Dimitri, that the dad, uh, Vlad, gave Dimitri a piece of bread and was like, there you go, fuck off, basically. <laughs> it was like, be on you. Um, but the, the actual phrasing was constantly reproached him with a piece of bread. I don't know what that means. <laughs> That could mean so many. It depends what bread as well. Was it like a baguette? Yeah, if it was a baguette, maybe he was beating him a little. I don't know what he was doing with the bread. But there was <laughs> bread like, involved. This is like a Jose cast a sketch for the gluten free bread. Um, <laughs> Vladimir, in an, another Russian article, I said, I said, I read. Because <laughs> I read said on my, on my notes. But then I said, read. Oh no. <laughs> this is a. No. Um, Vladimir said in the newspaper, before moving out of our flat, um, he, Dimitri, set fire to his room. He was convicted four times of stealing things. He took loans and gave my name as a trustee. I had to switch off my phone because banks kept calling me. I tried to help him. I found jobs for him several times, but what could I do? It was useless to talk to him. His eyes are made of glass. He is looking through your body and does not listen. So you've got this from Vlad and then other reports saying that his dad was actively like he was the mean one 
Yeah. So like, do you believe the dad or do you believe like... Do you believe Vlad the dad? Oh man. It's just a bit of a weird one. Um, Vladimir's second wife, here we go again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd Boff said that Dimitri's birth parents were drug addicts and she said, um, quote, um, we knew that this woman, Natalia, who I'll go on to, influenced him in a bad way. I saw her three times and she was also drunk, aggressive and shouting. They were even fighting with each other. But my point, the friend, the childhood friend said she'd never seen Dimitri's biological parents. And now the second wife, who he would have married after Dimitri had been kicked out, because again, remember, Dimitri was kicked out at 15 and his adopted mum died when he was 15. So like this didn't happen very sh- like long because there was not a gap between them how would how does she know anything about his biological parents oh unless she was his biological oh no because then she wouldn't say herself my bad it's confusing keep going (laughs) yeah (laughs) get ready (laughs) um after dimitri kicked out he basically he ended up on the streets and um in an attempt to survive he robbed a store and he stole a car so like he had he didn't he didn't know what else to do he was 15 he was on the streets and um, and then, but basically he was immediately arrested and put in jail. But like some homeless kids, they try and get put in prison, don't they? Yeah, they do, like, the red. Yeah. Um, but well, while he was in jail, no one, including Vlad, and again, he's only a 15 year old kid. No one visited him. Aww, Vlad. <laughs> Even if he did burn his room, Vlad, go and say hi, or at least please. After his release, <laughs> he got a job as a construction worker and he did paving and he was also a painter and decorator. Um, he wasn't, and now when he got a bit older, we're back, we're into his adult life now. He wasn't right. good with girls. He, um, I, was, I was guessing that somehow. Yeah, he's a bit, he's still a loner in his adult life. He was described by a, another friend who they call Victoria, but again, pinch of salt, it, her, mind, her name might not be Victoria. Um, she described him as untidy and she said and I quote he communicated with strange people especially those who like to drink end quote um, <laughs> although he himself wasn't a drinker he oh, didn't like he just preferred the company of drunk, drunk people and, but and this is a something that so a lot of this I pulled and I should say it from uh, a youtuber called Bailey Sarian, who says his story a lot better than me. Um, but I did do my own research, but I did steal a lot from her. And she was talking about how at least he's trying. Mm. Like, he's, he's obviously he's an introvert. He's not good with people. Maybe he just prefers the company of drunk people because there's less pressure with them. Yeah, they're more relaxed. Their inhib- inhibitions are lowered, you know. Mm-hmm. Good on him for getting himself out there. Big fan. Like, wow. Well, Here we go. This is where he met Natalia, who at this point in time was an alcoholic. Of course. Right. We're going to move on now to Natalia, whose maiden name was Dikova, and then she became Bakshiva because they married. So, go back in time to when she was born, January 25th, 1975. Father complete out the picture. She was raised by a mum and a grandmother. And then when her her mum died quite young, and then she was just raised by a grandmother. She always wanted to be a doctor. She was really clever. She told everyone she knew she was going to be a doctor. So she got the grades. She went to medical school in um, Kuban. I think that's how it's pronounced. Again, I don't know. I should probably have Googled how to pronounce these words. But alas. (laughs) Who's she? I don't know her. (laughs) Okay, so she got that. She went to medical school. And then she, she got her degree. And she worked for, and when I read about it, it just said, some time. There was not, like, a time frame. (laughs) I love it. Um, So she worked for some time as a senior nurse in the sanitation department of the Krasnoda Higher Military Aviation School of AK Severov Pilots. That's my dream job, that is. So she was a nurse. Um, she met her first husband shortly after, and she had he was an officer, and she had a son with him at the age of 23. So she was quite young, but she was living her best life. She had a dream job. She had a um, an army man as a husband, uh, a son. Now it gets sad again, as these stories usually do. Her husband dies, um, and 
he turns to alcohol and then later drugs she was mixing that alcohol and her drugs like recreational i don't think she was like stealing them from the medical yeah. stuff i think dabbling. she was just yeah dabbling a bit of drugs and this like problem it got to a point when she decided to seek help good for her mm-hmm. so she checked herself into a mental health hospital and she basically was like i have some kind of manic disorder mm. sort me out the doctors run tests on her um, but they deem her 100 percent well there's nothing wrong with her and then they just release her without helping her any like anymore oh, which is because she was an alcoholic so there's something going on yeah there's at least one percent bad that of that hundred yeah. percent <laughs> but and here's where it gets a little bit saucy this i'm going to bring up later but there's a theory that the only reason she did this was that she had mental health facility on her permanent record Okay. So when it up, it said she'd had psychiatric treatment. Ah. Mm. And that ah. will come back to you. Just keep that in the back oh. of your mind. Oh, oh um, yeah. Keep that in the back of your mind. So she <laughs> was um, she was then fired from her job as a nurse because of a chronic alcohol drug problem, obviously. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she was, you know, a nurse for, for pilots. And she did do, she was in the sanitization department. And not just a nurse, a senior nurse. And they made a point. Yeah article to say she was a senior nurse so yeah it made sense that they left. but yeah and that now we're back we're up to date with the dimitri story because she met dimitri in a bar getting mm-hmm. a little bit wa- wasted um, <laughs> when they met is sort of unknown most reports say they're only together four or five years before they got married but others say they like friends have said or well friends have said to newspapers that they knew the couple for 10 years at least God, and God. um and uh it's pretty likely the killing started in 1999 so that was what you jump from they were friends for like 10 years and then the killing started in 1999 <laughs> sorry sorry <laughs> yeah, plot twist. they murder people <laughs> <laughs> so they meet in the bar it's a love story they immediately hit it off um yeah. she's seven years older than him but the age gap didn't bother them um and they quickly moved in with each other because remember her husband's just died she's got a yeah. house she's got room so he moves in with her they're just hitting it off so at some point they get married and um there's not a lot about do you remember her son yeah, well, she, I remember she had one. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there's not a lot of information about him. And I didn't really dig into it because he's probably like, what the fuck, mom? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh. Like, like, he's probably not into reliving <laughs> the situation. <laughs> but uh, at some point, he moved out and he said, like, one of the, f- um, he was later, sp- it was in an article, he said that her drinking was an embarrassment. Oh, so he, he, moved out. he just that. wasn't. He wasn't part of that. Um, yeah. And apparently he, wasn't, he never tried to contact her or like rarely contacted her after that. But oh, there's not much about him anymore. That's all I know about the son. So Natalia and Dimitri in love. They've just got married. They moved to, here we go again, um, Bashkiera. And a friend said that they had no relatives there. They didn't know. So they didn't know why they'd pick there. It was just like, they were like, yeah, they might, I might as well just pull out a fucking hat. Like, um, but Dimitri told them that it was because they couldn't find work in Krasnova. That's not even the word I'm looking at. Um, <laughs> Krasnodar. Where's Krasnova? <laughs> it sounds like something in Witcher. Um, <laughs> Krasnodar. <laughs> and, um, and the friend said, and again, I quote, I didn't even think that this quiet man was killing people. It feels like he was just zombified, end quote. Zombies do, though. So. They, they, do, they do kill and eat people, lady. That's the <laughs> definition of them, but you know. Well, again, don't get angry at me. I laugh because I'm scared. Okay? <laughs> I'm not. So, they move into a hostel. This is the word they used, hostel. But I don't know whether that's some kind of thing, other thing in Russian. Because it they lived there and they had their own place. Whereas a hostel. Like apartment type Yeah. Thing. So maybe they meant like motel, because again I'm reading like Russian yeah. stuff. Maybe they meant yeah. motel. Um, so they move into a 
I'm going to use, again, I'm going to say hostile, but um, on a military aviation academy that belonged to the Russian Defense Ministry, where they both, and here, this is where it, shit starts getting weird. They wow. both had jobs on off as cooks. Oh, God, the, police, the pieces are falling into place. <laughs> oh, my okay. God. Right. Oh, bloody hell. So, cook. we're time travelling. We're time traveling to September 11th, 2017. This is when the oh. investigation started. So, not that long ago. This was not. This was, yeah, this was not. This is not like me bringing up Charlie Man. Charlie Manson, like I'm a friend of his. <laughs> Chad, Chad. What the fuck, Charles Manson or <laughs> Ted Bundy or others. <laughs> um, or like. John Wayne Gacy. It's not like the 70s and 80s. This is like, hold on, seven, three years ago. <laughs> I love how I really wish listeners could have seen that what might have sounded like a pause to calculate maths, which you should have been able to do. You literally just looked at your floating hand. Like nothing, no maths actually happened on it. You just looked at your hand. So it was seven. <laughs> seven. And then I count three. I was never good with number ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This is no. Okay, so this is only three years ago, bloody cow. So, now this is where it gets... The backstories, I just think, are important so you know who we're dealing with. Context. Yeah, because of context. Yeah. Um, this is where it gets juicy. Maybe yeah. I shouldn't use that word. <laughs> juicy. Or appropriate anymore. Anyway, so, some construction workers... They find a phone on the side of the road, just a phone. And as you do, they look on the phone at the photos. Had a Treaty. Suit. Basically, mm-hmm. they were looking for newt. Looking <laughs> 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 the photos. Now later, the, when they go a question, they they'll be like, "We only looked at two photos. We don't know. We didn't see anything else. Just two photos." Please, but if you saw these photos, you wouldn't just stop at two. You'd be like, "What the? F-? You'd keep going." Yeah. Because guess yeah. what they find in these photos? Right. They find right. a picture of a man posing with a woman's severed hand on his face. Oh, no. And sorry, listener, but like this. <laughs> like he's sniffing a palm. Yeah, literally just lying on her face. Um, as well as a photo with um, teeth and a head and also one where i saw in one report there was another photo where he had cut off a couple of fingers and put them up his nose right first of all i get it the novelty you would that's what you do with those halloween fingers you get but also that's not okay no um they said the construction workers they said that dimitri he actually came back because plot twist the man in the photos is dimitri oh. um <laughs> Sorry, guys, spoiler. Um, they uh, The construction worker said that Dimitri came looking for the phone, but they recognised him from the photos, and they were like, we don't know shit, sir. We've not seen a phone. Because <laughs> you would lie if you saw this, like, killer. <laughs> um, so he just fucked off. He just left. Didn't, didn't ask any more questions. He was just like, I trust you. And just... Yeah, um, so idea. police drive by, and they stopped uh, the workers stopped them and they gave them a phone and now this is a quote and i laughed so much when i read it because it's the most russian way of dealing with this situation the construction worker said to the police officer when he gave them the phone it's your job now sort it out end quote (laughs) (laughs) there's no messing about in russia is there (laughs) (laughs) i love that so much and so, obviously, it didn't take the police very long to check the, like, I think they checked the SIM, but they found out it was, it was Dimitri. They find yeah. who, whose phone it is. Um, so Dimitri tries to run uh, through, a, I think it was through a fence, but he, he gets caught, <laughs> like, immediately. Uh, um, uh. So the police, they separate, obviously, Natalia and Dimitri. Mm-hmm. And they question Natalia first. She immediately says, I don't know what the fuck this is. What? <laughs> for her reaction um, to seeing her husband hanging out with a dismembered corpse wasn't exactly normal. Her mm-hmm. surprise was pretty mild. She was, mm-hmm. it was very much like, oh no, what? I had no, no idea. 
<laughs> so that obviously didn't wash with the police. Mm-hmm. They were like, lady, you know something? And it's Russia, so I'm assuming they were quite angry. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I wouldn't want to lie to Russian police. Mm-hmm. It's good to get that on air as well. That's good to put out into the universe now in case yeah, any Russian would police... Not <laughs> we wouldn't do um, that. She quickly changes her story and says that the couple, both of them, her and Dimitri, um, were just having a walk and they simply stumbled upon the body and they thought it was just some innocent fun to take some photos with it. What a joke. Come on, you've had a while to prepare some kind of backs. I swear to God. <laughs> it's the stupidest shit I've ever heard. And it gets even better when Dimitri's questioned, right? So. They showed Dimitri the photos on the phone. And um, what he said is that he found the body of the woman in the forest opposite the flight school because they live, again, on the like aviation place where they yeah. train pilots. He just found a corpse in the forest. And he took he took the corpse home. He doesn't know why, because uh, they ask him. He go, He's like, I don't know why I dismembered and took photos of the body. I just did. It was, oh, I just did it. <laughs> so they look around the um, the the base yeah sorry i was so confused i was like wait the house we're not at the house yet get ready for that um so they look <laughs> around the base. they send a lot of like training officers to go and find more evidence because again they're all, it's a military base so they go over the the forest i suppose dimitri's talking about and they ended up finding the head of the woman um near the dustbins in a bucket <laughs> no, you're and, so um, close to the actual bins don't just leave it in a bucket Bizarre. Now here's where things get a bit weirder, as if they weren't weird enough already. <laughs> Dimitri had also scalped her. Oh take, no! I think that happens a lot. He loves. They ha- apparently the couple had a thing with wigs, and the police. Right, this is almost as funny in a sort of like dry, weird way as that construction workers. You deal with it because the police obviously go, Dimitri, what the fuck? Why did you scalp her? And he goes, just did something stupid. Oh man, the thing is, I can relate to Dimitri and his bad, <laughs> like taking selfies with. Oh, we would do the same. No, that's not good. Scalping. So the investigators are like, we've got a nut job on our hands, <laughs> <laughs> and they investigate. They go and search for the home, which was foul. <laughs> oh, I must see the stench in that. Yeah, com- and neighbours complained about that a lot, not to much avail. But basically, other than just the human body parts, it was also a complete hoarder house. Um, there's like oh. a video, you can find all of the like images of the house and there's like a video of the police walking around it. There's nothing too... Gra- I didn't gruesome. see the full video, but there's not... It's not like super gruesome if you don't yeah. know what you're looking at. <laughs> but the house is like, yeah, proper hoarder house, shit everywhere, disgusting. Um, like just clothes strewn all over the place, rubbish, papers, yeah. whatever. And like I said, like the neighbors complained about the stench like a lot. Um, yeah. In one drawer, like the junk drawer, they just found um, at least a dozen mobile phones. Ooh. Yeah. Um, Ooh. And investigators, they found, um, oh, I, I put an ellipsis here because I wanted to find how many photos they found. But clearly I didn't find how many numbers they found. I so it's my to make it up. My script literally says, investigators found dot, 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 printed photos. <laughs> <laughs> they found quite a lot, though. It was a lot. And most of them were of Dimitri, well, a lot of them were Dimitri and Natalia with other people that they assumed were friends. They're just like on nights out, they're having a good time, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then they're flicking through, and what the fuck did they come to? Now they start finding photos of their dishes, oh. dismembered body parts, corpses. Um, now, I've already spoken to you about this one because it fucking was foul. The oldest one they find in the stack dated back to November. I can't read. Dated back to December 28th, 1999. And it was a decapitated head and I shit you not, served on a silver platter, oh. surrounded by fresh oranges. Um, the eyes had been replaced with olives and sort of like weird like cutouts because I did stumble on this actual f- uncensored, fo- uncensored photo which was not a fun surprise thank you to whoever fucking wrote the blog I was reading thank you very much that's not something I ever wanted to see 
but I did. So I, I have to live with that now. Thank you for that. Thank you. But they'd replaced the eyes with olives and they'd shoved a lemon onto this poor man's nose. And considering the date the photo was taken, I'm guessing it was probably holiday meal. Oh, yeah. It's got Christmas vibes, yeah, isn't it? And with the oranges, because they were like, I think, tangerines, little oranges. Oh, they're foul. Right. That me. Oh. I, oh. As vegetarians as well, that's a line too for them. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the head was cooked. Just throw that Oh, that makes it. it better then. I'm on, I'm on board with the entire thing. It's fine now. What? Dimitri, Natalia, get your shit together, please. I cannot. They could afford oranges and lemons and olives. Surely they could afford a fucking bit of, like, if you really want to eat meat, get some pork. They've got a silver platter. Don't go for human heads. Go to M&S, get some honey roast gammon. Get a steak. Yeah, eat. have a few selection of meats. You know what? I'm going to tell you about this in a second. But they also had a fucking chicken. So they're eating other meat. Just eat a chicken, not a human oh, fucking head. In case they get too full on human head, like actually, I fancy a bit of a uh, KFC on the side. Oh um, man! So this isn't the only. The photos aren't the only thing the investigators find. Although, I'm sure that was quite a shock in itself. Yeah, so no. when they're in work surface, they see what they think is a wick. Obviously, I've said they had a thing for the wicks. So they get closer and they pick it up. No, nope, oh, it's a human scalp. Oh, <laughs> scalp. That's too much salt. Again, what they do with the fridge is a very Russian response to finding this. Um, so in the fridge, they found frozen remains, steamed human meat that had been preserved, the victim's body parts in jars. Now, this is weird because everything in the house is a shithole, yeah? Mm -hmm. All of the non-human food is just, there's a fucking full chicken, not covered in anything, just lobbed in the fridge. And again, no. these photos, you can, they're literally on like Daily Mail. They're on like UK. Then <laughs> you Google their names and it's, you see this fridge come up. So like a full chicken is just lobbed in there. Human food, human food. Like normal people food is like lobbed in there. But all these jars of like, they've pickled them in saline solution. So all these pickled jars of human flesh mm. are like all neatly stacked fucking weird because when i get on to the bits later why is this what all oh, that's neat natalia i'm so excited so, as well as the pickled flesh they find frozen meat um they find 19 slices of human skin seven packets of body parts and as i said a random chicken i can't go with the chicken to be honest of all the other bits <laughs> I, um, so now, this is why I was laughing about it being a Russian response to finding this fridge. So the, the investigators, they didn't know what was human and what wasn't. So they were frustrated because they couldn't categorise it there. So what they did is they unplugged the fridge and just took the whole thing in as evidence. Love it. <laughs> took so the whole, they were like, fuck this. Took the whole fridge. <laughs> they were like, oh, no, wait, that's just pesto. No, that's just chopped tomatoes. Yeah. Even weirder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They also found a handwritten cookbook in Natalia's handwriting detailing how to cook human meat and what meals it's best for, as well as a tutorial video they'd made on how to dismember and prepare a human body for consumption. It's, you forget, the tutorial really drives it home of how recent it was. This isn't some 18th yeah. century like mystic cookbook. This is a YouTube <laughs> video <laughs> how to cook human beings. And when I talk about later that maybe they weren't alone, which I'll go into in more detail later, oh, the fact that they are keeping stuff neat, the human shit neat, and they're writing like how to's and making how to's suggests maybe they weren't in this alone. But so, we'll, come, we'll come back to that. <laughs> so, oh man, <laughs> I have it's to. You know what? We're like only halfway through. <laughs> yeah. This bit is sort of like sad. I'm interested in true crime, but I think I'm only interested in the abstract, in the how do people kill people? When people bring up then, like, when I remember that there's actual victims, it's sort mm. of like, well, what the fuck? This, this isn't sore. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, 
yeah. I'm not watching Hostel. Like, this is like an actual case. Because really um, the victim, you know that I said about the head, the girl's head, they found the woman that he was yeah. posing pictures with. So they, they didn't find any other victims names out because everything was so mixed up and they they literally couldn't decipher yeah. who anyone else was so the victim they they knew about was the woman the head she was a waitress called elena um sorry elena but i'm gonna put your surname <laughs> i feel really mean now because she's a <laughs> i'm trying to be respectful elena i'm sorry um bash Risheva. she's the only one that they basically said we did it the others they kind of they denied later but the pair said that they confessed to murdering her in a fit of jealousy because Natalia believed that she'd been trying to seduce Dimitri. And Natalia had instructed that he kill the waitress, which he did literally instantly. Um, he just pulled out, he kept a knife on him all the time. So he just pulled it out and stabbed her to death. Wow. Yeah. And then later, Dimitri would say that his uh, relationship with Natalia was such a mad, passionate affair that his infatuation led to him losing all morality. I mean, been there, JK, I'm just J JK. <laughs> and um, Natalia said that uh, she loved him as a mother would love a son. Oh, Which... it's so messed up. I cannot with any of this. So there's mommy issues and ev oh, it's just... <laughs> So neighbours said that Natalia, and now here's where it gets even worse, she would bake pies to boost her income using, and I quote, whatever was around. I mean, we've all been students, but come on. Um, she is believed to have sold them to military trainees at the academy where she worked and um, by where they were living. And she also offered meat to at least one cafe in the city who, thank God, this one cafe, they said they turned her down because they only take meat from certified places. But she was also trying to get work as a chef and said she was a, cook, she was a professional cook and she'd cooked before. But they said that she looked home she looked feral. So they didn't want her in the cafe. But they were like, maybe you should look into where else she was looking to try and be a chef and sell her fucking meat because <laughs> mm, I wonder what that meat was. <laughs> it's horse meat at Tesco. Yeah, I know. It's believed that the pair used uh, dating sites posing as a hunky man named Angel to lure victims to kill and eat. Predictable. But get get this, Angel might have been a real person. Oh, this just gets thicker and thicker and weirder. Um, the police began to suspect that the pair weren't working alone. And it was actually a friend of theirs that would find victims on the dating websites for them and then pass their information to them. Now, this guy that they think did it is a childhood friend of Dimitri's, and he's called Roman Sid mm -hmm. Sidorov, who goes by the nickname Angel. Dimitri goes by the nickname Devil. They've called each other this for ages. Um, they've known each other since they were 14, and they've both been convicted for committing robbery with each other. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. <sighs> Investigators believe they would sedate their victims with um, a drug called Corvalol, which apparently is quite easy to get in Russia, and then they'd skin them alive before right. dismembering the eaten. Do they have? Do they have to take it to these levels? Can you not? Can you be a I nice? Wish you could see how much I've still got to read. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited and sad a little bit. Neighbours said that they could smell the drug coming from the home and that the place absolutely reeked, naturally. Mm -hmm. um, they'd complain, um, but a worker at the Aviation Academy said, and I quote, each time we tried to enter their room, started wild shouting and crying, Natalia is a scandalous woman, aggressive, so we did not risk it. Just, just, just the flags, so many red flags that, that all these planes should be landing. There's that many red flags, so they wouldn't... And what hurts me about this whole story, more, more than any of it, is that the only reason they were caught is because Dimitri dropped his phone. I mean, I, of all the things... I swear to God. He didn't have a fucking phone. password on his phone. He has a picture of him posing with a fucking decapitated head and he didn't think to put a thumb lock on his phone. Why is it people do that? If, you'd, if you're that good at killing emerging people across the span of years, you'd think, oh, I might get a burner phone then for all my bad selfies. So originally, the couple said that they had killed and eaten at least 30 people, um, but Ooh. have since changed their story, saying that they only killed Elena. 
Um, Dimitri also denies eating human flesh at all. The cookbook, the video, I don't know her. I don't eat people. Not me. Not me, sir. <laughs> it's not a hobby. Um, in prison, Dimitri was kept in solitary confinement, fearing he'd be beaten by other prisoners. He also complained about missing his wife, who they say dominated his life and the relationship. She wore the pants, to say the least. Ah, um, and <laughs> Natalia in prison, she was constantly mocked and taunted by her fellow detainees, who'd ask her, and I quote, did you eat enough human meat? <laughs> Which girls not the greatest meat. burn in the world, but I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> It probably sounds better in like a Russian accent in the, in the yeah. middle of a prison. Yeah, I'm sure like if you translate it to Russian, it's like some crazy... <laughs> just all swear really words. <laughs> <laughs> in her defence now, do you remember when I said Natalia before she had checked herself into a psychiatric hospital in the hopes that she'd be diagnosed with something? And maybe this was just to get it on her record. Wow. In her defence, she said she wasn't sound of mind, and that's why she did all the killing because she was she was crazy. Um, and then she she literally was like, "Look on my record, I'm not mentally well." She went oh. under psychic evaluation and was deemed completely sound of mind. And actually, it was Dimitri who got the psychiatric help. Oh, I'm so glad it backfired because that's premeditated crap otherwise. Mm -hmm. So she was charged in February 2019, which is not long ago. <laughs> that's that I'm too close to over that. I'm sorry. Yeah. She was charged in February 2019 of incitement to murder. And now, because they couldn't, they couldn't prove they'd killed all the people they had photos of. So they found some of the meat they found belonged to Elena, is her, their last victim. And the pickled remains... Most of it was Elena, but there was other stuff that was other people, but they couldn't identify it. So they were never charged with anyone else's murder except for Elena and one other person. Oh, yeah. Gosh. She oh. was charged with one and a half years in prison. Sad. I'm so sad. And, I'm really sad right now. and 10 years in a penal colony, which pe you know I what? was like, that's nothing. But penal colonies... Um, basically are like really they use them as slaves so a lot of companies will you know they like get cheap labor from places mm. well actually they like they they think they're getting it from one place like Primark and shit think they're getting it from one place but then that gets like moved to another place and like the companies are all oh booked up so it's a lot of the People, a lot of prisoners in penal colonies, they do labour, like free labour. So they're like sewing clothes, making cards, shit like that. But they're, really they're meant to be like horrific. Can you imagine but going to have like your staff team building meeting with a cannibal? And that's what, 11 and a half years? She that's ate 30 people. Oh my God, that means she's going to be out, you know, pretty soon. We'll, we'll be watching yeah. the news together in, in Holland or wherever we are at the time. Hopefully not Russia. Yeah, I was going to say that's off the list. On June 28th, 2019, Dimitri was sentenced to 12 years and two months in a maximum security prison. Um, he was prescribed with compulsory supervision and treatment by a psychiatrist. But before I complain about how little time he got, because even if they were just sentenced, it's Russia, one. I thought they were really strict. And two... <laughs> He decapitated and scalped a girl. Whether it was just that one woman or not. A lot. Yeah. Whether it was just one lady that he ended up killing, he it, it wasn't like he just stabbed her and was like, it was not like a fit of rage. Yeah. But whatever. He died. So we're good. He died oh, on the 16th of February, 2020, of undiagnosed diabetes in custody. But I, now this is my own personal opinion, and I didn't read this anywhere, but hmm. did he? Because he complained the whole time he was in prison. He complained the whole time that the other prisoners wanted to kill him, that they were going to beat him to shit. Like he didn't, he didn't feel safe there. And then he was in custody for what? How long? And he dies? Oh, the thing is, the irony as well, if, if that is true, of it being diabetes, which is probably brought on by all the human flesh. <laughs> now I'm thinking about cannibals with gout. <laughs> <laughs> 
imagine if one of them was allergic to a human, like or something. That would be a, a way of being revealed, wouldn't it? Like you go to the doctor's, oh, you're allergic to skin. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so, someone leaked the photos from Dimitri's phone, no one knows who it was, but they leaked it to the, me- the Western media, and it exploded. Basically, they didn't want, they didn't want <laughs> this shit to get out, but it did. And it sparked a whole bunch of rumours. So, you know I was talking about um, the meat in the jars being quite too organised, and yeah. maybe links to Roman, uh, like Angel, who, he says he has nothing to do with it, and they've not charged him with anything, so. Oh, so Innocent until proven guilty or whatever, but you know um but a lot of people basically have suggested that these killings must have been done by a larger family of cannibals that there has to have been a whole group in this this town because there's no way dimitri and natalia could have done it alone for so long natalia was an alcoholic they lived in squalor there had to be of an, another place where they were killing people because yeah. they were they clearly weren't doing the house there's no blood or anything in the house it was just shit it just was gross and there was human body parts in the fridge yeah. there was and obviously the, the scalp on the side, but like it wasn't, scalp it wasn't the like side. somewhere where it didn't look like people were getting fucking dismembered in there. Yeah, um, area. So people think they weren't, they were working for a group, but the, the couple would have took the rap to keep the family safe. And um, because if they snitched, the whole group of cannibals, like there's a lot of people that you're just going to get offed in prison, aren't you? Let's be real. And if, again, if they like, oh, we did it, and then the police are like, oh, well, we've got the people that killed all these people in jail, then the family walks free. Oh, I don't want that to happen. Yeah, it's really, it's really fucked up. It's really oh. fucked up. This is my, my last point, and it's another bit of a, like, a conspiracy. But basically, in the, not the mugshot, but like the main photo, in like all the photos of Dimitri, actually, he's like wearing this T-shirt with a fat dragon on it, yeah. And this criminal lawyer said that he thinks that Dimitri was wearing it on purpose, this dragon, because Hannibal Lecter first oh. appears in the novel Red Dragon, yeah. And yeah. it's believed that killers and that they drop little clues because, like, at the end of the day, they want the notoriety and the yeah. like fame, like the narcissists. That's why yeah. a lot of people kill. So they they want to be caught. Like a little bit of them wants to be caught. Yeah. And like maybe it wasn't conscious, but he did drop that phone. Theatrics. Yeah. I mean, again, if you you're that good at yeah, you'd be yeah. a bit. He more lost. Nasty. He lost his phone, and he went back to where he'd lost it. Yeah, and then just let it go when they said no. But they hadn't seen it. That's, nah, nah. No. Sorry, Dim. Sorry, no. I'm so glad he's not alive. No offence. <laughs> I'm scared. And that's the story of Dimitri and Natalia, the cannibal couple. I mean, the fact that I need a massive wee it could be because I've had three cans of cherry Pepsi, but I think it's from fear, you know, that mm. that happened into this year like he was still a thing a few months ago she is still a thing yeah it's just she looks quite like mumsy as well she doesn't look he if someone would put 10 people in a line and was like which one's the cannibal maybe i'd be able to pick him out but yeah she isn't like (sighs) thing is what i don't know it just doesn't ring any nice selling smelling wait no and none of that was right. It doesn't make any sense to me that the son is just very under-acknowledged throughout all of this. Other, he's probably disowned himself from the family because, you know, mom's a cannibal. Should I Google it? Should I Google it right now? Well, I want to Google these images, but that can't be good before bedtime on a Sunday night. I'll save it if that's more Friday night material, so I'll wait till next week. The son would be what? She was born in 75... Yeah. She had a kid at 23, which makes that 98. Oh my god, I'm older than the killer's son. I'm older than... I'm... No, I'm not. No, you're I'm not. Lying. <laughs> you're I'm not. A you're more... I'm a year younger. Your math's really shocking. I mean, that's, taken... that's, that's the scariest thing of today, is your ability to count. But like, I mean, so if they were killing back from... Wait, they were killing? So that dated back to 99? Yeah, which is so why people... One. See, again, this sort of links into the family. Who were the people in the pit? No one says, you know, there was the friends in the photos. When I heard the story, my brain just was like, oh, pictures of them with victims. But no one has actually said they were victims. Yeah, These people could have just been friends. Them, yeah. 
these people could have just been friends. So is this the group? Oh man, Leah, is this we the can't group hear this. started in '99. What, what, what if they listen to this podcast? <laughs> I'm scared now. <laughs> I'm scared. Because we've just figured it out. We've just sold all this. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Because, yeah, if you're going to make a cookbook, you tend to do stuff like that for an audience. Yeah, you know, just doing it for yourself. And, it, and the video, maybe I could say, maybe she was just writing down her recipes for herself, just so she could remember them on a later day. Yeah, yeah, it's fair enough. You know, of how to dismember a body. Yeah. Who's that for? Exactly. It's not like you're going to put that out on YouTube and wait and for your audience. That the cookbook, they say, was in the Tyler's handwriting. Okay, mm-hmm. she wrote it. The video they find, it was never said it was Dimitri and Natalia's video. It was just they found a video. Oh my God, yeah, that could have been... Exi- oh my God, they've not given... Oh crap, I need to know so much. Again, the Russians didn't want the images leaked. They didn't want this to get out. So a lot of it's been sort of hush-hushed. So we may this never know. Harder. We're going to have to come back next week with answers. <laughs> oh my- the thing is as well then, if they pretty much started killing early on, how do you even broach that in- into a new relationship? Who yeah. brings it up first? I fancy. What do you want for dinner tonight? I don't know, it's your choice. How do you feel about <laughs> me? Because <laughs> you know when they say, oh, I don't mind, it's up to you. There is a limit to that. I feel there is a boundary. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, man. And that's real. That happened re- like in real time. Don't like that it was so, like, even into 2019. And she, she'll be out in 10 years. <laughs> if she does have- die in. I'm assuming that's not a great, like, it's not a great place to live. Russian prison, I assume. She's definitely not going to be hired as prison chef, is she? Because, <laughs> although actually, yeah, because she's in um, P- penal. <laughs> is, it P- is it really called penal? Penal facility. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> I do love that. <laughs> Oh, it bothers me that the whole she used to bake pies thing was sort of brushed. That just wasn't an important part in a lot of the stories I was reading, which I feel I like is <laughs> That's literally like the the underlying, the main premise of Bloody Sweeney Todd. So like focus on that a little more. They had so much. They were just trying to sell it. What the fuck? Genuinely, I don't understand. How did you go from being like a wholesome... In one article, they were saying that she did end up selling some of the jars of the pickled stuff oh. to like the, like the trainees because they're the students, so they're like broke, so they'd yeah. they'd buy it. They didn't do anything, didn't they? I bet they bet they didn't even. I bet they couldn't tell. I bet they're like, oh, this is nice. Oh man, the fact that she it just sounds a little too pre-planned to me. The whole psych psychiatric ward diagnosis and everything, yeah. and then the and. I'm assuming she w- they lived at an aviation place because of her, her husband linked to the I military. Don't, I don't know, because they moved. So, like, yeah. <gasps> so many unanswered questions. Yeah. It's a, this, it's a lot. This, this was a, a lot. An, an hour into research, I was like, this is interesting. Three hours into researching, I was like, well, why? <laughs> <It's what? laughs> I hate people. This is a lot, man. You've done well, though. Thank you for going as deep as you did. I really enjoyed all that. Even hearing it, some of it for the second time, just a different time of night, really adds a new perspective to it. We should close the curtains, if I wanted. Yeah, I've got mine open, and I'm scared I'm going to see a head. Oh, don't. I really... I, I It's bad. It's really bad that I want to look at it, because I know as soon as I've yeah. looked at it, I want to Weird look curiosity. At it. I know. It's just... Oh, man. No, I'm not going to. I don't need to see it. I've watched Hereditary last night. I need a few nights off from this kind yeah. of decapitated night. I literally, because I just stumbled on it. I didn't, I didn't go search for it. I didn't want to look at it. And yeah. it just kind of, like, it was on some blog and it just like popped up. I was, like trying to get this head out my, my my head. I was, I taught my distance geography for an hour. And then I watched two hours of Drag Race. And I still couldn't stop thinking about it. It just oh, was in my brain. Bloody hell. Have you, just, was this today or yesterday? Yesterday night. Oh, so you've you've had a night's sleep at least. Those dream catchers saving you. Oh my god. <laughs> because I've not seen it, but because obviously you told me just beforehand and again through this, I've got this weird novelty. It's almost like it's from a Will Ferrell film crossed with a Saw movie when it's got like the the olives and the paper eyes. It, it yeah. sounds ah, and also bad, very bad. It was oh, just. Oh, and you know what got me is this bloody blog had because obviously I scrolled past I saw it for like a second and then scrolled past it really fast yeah. it was ingrained yeah. in my brain after that second but I wasn't like lingering like I wasn't having a good look I like scrolled past <laughs> the fucking 
you know how they captioned that photo? They captioned oh. it, a photo taken in very bad taste. Maybe it was bad taste, I put it on your fucking Tumblr blog. Oh man, but no, but the pun in itself, very bad taste. I do like Oh, the oh my God, I didn't even I click. I hate you whoever oh, wrote this one. Seriously, get help. I really enjoyed this one, which is bad because it was not enjoyable stuff, but I did enjoy yeah. learning. Yeah, it's interesting. When I, because I, I enjoyed learning about true crime, but not yeah. because I'm, I'm like, hell yeah. You keep killing, baby. Because it's, <laughs> it's, I don't condone the actions. I just think it's interesting. The human brain is interesting. Yeah. Because it, it gets me that, like, Natalia, they were like, she's not mentally unwell. But surely you'd have to be mentally unwell. To yeah. Kill yeah, because that either means... It's a bit of a paradox, isn't it? Because it either means that people can actually be that evil not because of a mental issue but yeah. by a choice or that maybe there's levels to mental maybe it's like some kind of subconscious mental health where you have to you don't or yeah. i don't know it so goes out either it's, way i think like there's nothing scientifically off like chemically in their brain yeah but there's yeah. gotta be some... something to do with the conscious but then that makes you worried in either instance because then there's a lot of people that are like that that are just bumbling about undiagnosed because there's nothing to diagnose they're just evil people oh, that's, this is really bloody dark this episode i actually really need to lie down i swear okay. I'm, again i'm i might watch another three hours of drag race to try and take my mind off this i feel like i want to eat something that's made of marshmallows and sugar just something sweet maybe take a shower oh let's not push it i haven't done that in months <laughs> But my Ooh. God, just don't let me do any research because don't let me succumb to the terrible desire to just have a look. At the, I want to see the fridge. I do want to see the fridge. I'm gonna if, you, if you Google it, all the images will come up, but they'll just come up um, blurred. Censored. You have to, like I think it's, a, a, you have to do a bit of digging to find the uncensored photos. I was yeah. like on a, on a link from a link from a link, which is how I found this random blog. Wormholes, it's always the way. <laughs> but no, I did. I massively enjoyed that. So thank you for putting so much effort into the research which is probably more than you've ever done for your degree which i can relate i'm not even gonna deny it <laughs> love it so much i also i'm going to pee my pants okay so. we don't have an outro but we do have a social media we have twitter we have instagram we have youtube we have facebook you can follow us on there you can also find us on wherever you get your podcasts pretty much everywhere there's a list on our twitter if you want to have a fucking look but we'll probably be there trust me yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> i really so. want to stop a box as well at some point i don't even know what they are but we're gonna have one one day send us presents <laughs> yes good ones not bad ones not anything yeah, no to human it. heads <laughs> <laughs> so good. Can you stop no bye